Hi, folks. I'm Bill Leinhart from the University of Manchester, and uh, you might already have seen my two quick uh, one-dimensional inverse problems tutorials. I'm now going to look at um, some two-dimensional problems, specifically tomography and radon transform problems. And first of all, we're, we're just going to do uh, a 2D radon transform, but uh, as a matrix, a linear algebra approach rather than um, using uh, an operator inversion such as filtered back projection. Let me just share the screen. Okay, so we're running MATLAB here, and this is a Mat MATLAB live script. Um, link to it we put in the notes. So you need to download AirTools, which you can get off GitHub here, AirTools 2, um, as a MATLAB library for illustrating algebraic approaches to uh, two-dimensional tomography problems. You have to run Air Tools to set up to get the paths all set up. And um, you can see the link at the bottom in, in the references to the uh, to the paper. OK, so following um, examples in Air Tools, we set up a problem using Parallel Tomo. Works very similar to uh, to Radon in the MATLAB. Um, toolbox, but what it gives you instead of just calculating the Redon transform, it gives you a matrix A that implements the Redon transform. So we're using angles from um, 0 to 178 in steps of 2 degrees, is angles and degrees, um, and for each of those projection angles, we've got 75 parallel rays, which is the number of, of detectors in our virtual 1D detector array. Uh, given those parameters, we get a matrix A, a vector B, which is a sinogram data, and it's also given as um, a, a phantom image that was used to make the sinogram data, some, something like a Shep Logan phantom. So, I'll just do run section on that to check that it's run. And then, um, yep, it's running. It has this little icon to say it's running. <laughs> okay, it's done. And then um, the next section just reproduces this as a grayscale image. You can change the parameters if you want. Okay, so what happens if we just try solving with backslash, which is the, the squares operator? So A backslash B gives, gives me an X, uh, an image vector. Um, you'll notice that um, when I hover over A, it's actually a sparse matrix. I reshape it to an N by N matrix and then use image SC to display it. Check it's got the right thing. running backslash on a fairly large bus matrix. And there we go. So it's a reasonable reconstruction. Um, this is with the inverse coin. I added no errors to the sinogram data and uh, it works pretty well. Let's try and understand that. If we run the SVD um, and plot the SVD, the singular values that is of the operator A, what we see on the log log scale is the singular values decay approximately linearly. Um, so this is a fairly mild power law of um, decay of the singular values, the sigma i. And um, so it is mildly opposed. Of course, there is a dramatic um, cutoff corresponding to um, well, uh, let's look at the image parameters. It was a 50 by 50 image, so we don't expect to be able to get any more than that. And then 
Um, there's also a number of data. Um, in this case, after it gets, you know, a steep fall like that, we probably don't don't trust it very much. Um, anyway, the condition number is not too bad, and so with no noise, it works okay. Now let's add a little bit of noise. So um, B N B noise is B plus point one percent of a Gaussian random variable same size as B multiplied by the norm of B so that um, it's scaled in some sensible way that we can compare with the, the values in B. Actually, I think the image vector is between 0 and 1 uh, in the pixel values, but of course it depends on some other scale factors that are used in the size. Okay, so um, I've already run that one i'll just just run it again it displays the um the noisy version and um you can see if if you look closely at least on your own screen uh possibly you want to blow it up that the background that should be zero because um there's nothing there is speckled and that's those speckles also appear in in the sinogram if we then try reconstructing that using just the backslash operator. So here it is applied to BN, one section. It's great until we get the, the answer coming out. Blah, 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 it comes. It's blue showing that it's running. We've got a little running icon there. Okay, so it does get the outside shape, um, at least, but this, and, and I think maybe you can see something of those ellipses, but it's mainly swamped by by noise. Um, I mean, it, it doesn't look on the sonogram data that added too much noise, but uh, obviously the ill conditioning is coming in there with with backslash. Um, now let's run this code. Uh, first, n of a is the, the norm of a, and I have to do full of a because a was a sparse matrix. And I, I set a ticking off factor that's 0.5 times the norm. I mean, it doesn't just depend on, on the um, matrix norm. Uh, it depends on um, the level of noise, et cetera. So it depends on several scale factors. Uh, so you have to generally play with this to see what happens. Um, and here we make an augmented matrix, which is um, A as, as a block, and then the ticking off factor times the I N squared uh, identity matrix, because the image is, is N squared. Okay, I have an error message. Oh, you can tell this is live. What's my error message? Matrix dimensions must agree. Hmm. Okay, probably didn't run something. Oh, okay. Check that. So BN should be the same size as B, six seven fifty by one size of B. 6750 by one. Um, the size of A, oh, it's hard to tell because it's sparse. <laughs> um, okay. I have to make. Um, an augmented version of B. 
So B and augmented is um, six eight hundred by ah. It's this should be um, should be n squared, I guess. It, the taken off factor has to be n square size. Let's, let's try that. Okay, it's running again. It's stripey to show it's running. It actually takes a while to take, calculate norm. This is an operator norm of A, so it has to it's a solve the eigenvalue from roughly for the first eigenvalue of A transpose A for A sparse. So um, maybe I should have calculated that once and, once and for all at the beginning. Okay, so it, it's run and it's given me a simple ticking off regularized solution. I, I guess I was lucky with the ticking off factor, um, but uh, you can see quite nicely that it has the features. I probably should have changed the uh, switch off the tick marks on the axis and the scale of it. But uh, anyway, it's quite nice that you can, you can see that. Um, we can also, instead of doing simple ticking off with the identity, oh, so that, that's a cross section image of, um, uh, through the image, because sometimes the, the pictures are misleading, but you can see the, the peaks at the side and, um, and in, in the middle there. This is the uh, just the cross section across the, the middle of this image. Okay, so we can also do generalized ticket off. And to do that, we have to make um, a matrix that does the finite difference between neighboring pixels, both horizontally and vertically. And if you look in chapter 12 of um, a book that's referenced at the bottom, then um, you can see uh, the, the rationale for this. So L is a matrix that implements two blocks, one differentiates in the X direction, the other in the Y direction. And it's, it's a one dimensional derivative Kronecker pro pro producted with the identity. So this is a matrix L and L times X is gonna be the penalty instead of just X squared. And I mean, this is just an, um, uh, an ex uh, example of how to implement it. You might want to play with the ticking off factors. Um, in this case, I've done spy of L that shows what shape the L matrix is. Um, and you can see the two blocks. In it. Okay, so um, the the wider one is is because of the ordering of um, a, a row of the matrix, another row when it's ordered as a column vector. Okay, so we can do the same uh, trick forming an augmented matrix, which is taken off factor times L. We probably should have changed the taken off factor because um, it has to be scaled with this derivative matrix. But but anyway, it it does run. Um, and then you can play with it. Oh, it's still, still running this one. Maybe. Okay. One section. Okay, now it's running this one. The matrix L I've, I've made sparse as well. Of course, it is very, very sparse. Um, but it depends what kind of solver you're going to use. Uh, if you use an iterative solver, you can especially take advantage of the um, sparsity and here displayed on the same axis. Um, that's got a bit of a smoothing norm, but I mean, I didn't really play with the, uh, the taken off factor to make it fair. So um, one of the suggestions here is to have, have a look at that. You can also, uh, do tick and off regularization combined with the generalized tick and off. So you can have a bit of the identity and a bit of the derivative. 
And this, this shows you how to implement it. You can then go away and play, also adding different levels of noise and seeing how robust the choice of taking off factor is. Maybe we just got lucky. And also you can look at a times X and see how close it is to B to see how well it fits the data because taking off regularization is a compromise between fitting the data um, and satisfying the regularization penalty function. So you notice in my office, the lights go off if we don't move too much. So that's what happened just then. Okay, so the book I mentioned, um, Hansen, Jorgensen, Leinhardt, uh, and, and our friends who wrote some of the chapters, Computed Tomography Algorithms in Sight and Just Enough Theory. Um, so you can have a look at, at that for more details on regularization. Um, and there's a academic reference for the Air Tools manual, but you download it from the GitHub. It's fairly simple. You just unzip it. Okay. Stop the share. And um, that's it for now. That was just a simple bit of regularization, really set up so that you can you can play with ticking off regularization. Um, you can do bigger problems if you want, applying iterative methods to those augmented sparse matrices. Um, so next up, we're going to look a little bit more at the singular value decomposition using the same air tools to make the matrix. And so uh, look out for the next video.